Hello everyone, my name is Bernard Naden. Welcome to Empowering People Enabling Business, the first ever podcast series by Janeshtin, an award-winning organization that aims to leverage technology and the internet to connect marginalized communities to the global economy. For this maiden episode, we will be discussing about EPIC Online, or English Proficiency in Conversation Online, a program designed to enhance English language proficiency by providing one-to-one -one coaching sessions with English-speaking coaches from around the world. With us today, we have two EPIC coaches, Aiza Zaki and Faiz Jamal. Hi, Bernard. Hi, I'm Aiza Zaki from the Language Department. I'm kind of new to the organization, but I have had some experience conducting classes online before I joined this company. Hey, I'm Faiz, and I'm an EPIC coach. I've been a coach since October 2022, and I'm happy to share my experience with you. So Aiza and Faiz, after all this time of being an EPIC coach, I'm sure you hold many memorable moments. Could you each uh, at least share one noteworthy moment from your sessions? Right. One of the memorable, I would say memorable experiences that I've conducted sessions where my, my the learner on the other hand is part of the PWT community. So it has been quite a, a nice challenge for me because I would have to adapt to the situation so that I know my, the learner on the other end is also learning. So yeah, I would say that it's something which is inspiring to me and having to conduct online sessions with someone who, who's using a reader who is visually impaired. Um, I would say, although maybe the approach might be slightly different, the whole experience is still very much the same as any other online session. And yeah, it's been fun. Right, right. Wonderful to share that. Faiz, what about you? When talking about memorable or inspiring experiences, I think I learned the most from my beginner level students who can't even produce simple sentences correctly in English. And they have problems with um, understanding instructions in English too, but they are working in multinational company. So English is a very important skill for them, but they have some kind of grit and they want to learn actually. It's just that they don't know how. Mm -hmm. So when they come to EPIC, this program is focusing on conversational skills. So the way we do it is by having private one-on-one -on -one coaching. And uh, we talk about things uh, which are related to their life. Yeah, even in the beginner level, for example, talking about the weather, the seasons, these are all related to our lives. So it makes things easier for them to understand and to grasp the skills. Right. Interesting. Like it's hundred percent online for all of you out there listening. And yeah, I think Aiza and Faiz have a lot of experience with this. And that brings me to my next point. I want to link the title of our podcast, Empowering People, Enabling Business, especially the Empowering People part back to the role of being an EPIC coach. I know there are cases of EPIC students who have now become coaches themselves, which is impressive, I must say. Can you share with us some of the inspiring stories like this? One of the inspiring stories I would say is, Faiz used to be one of my students, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> for a business writing course. So, it's a very, very pleasant surprise to me, actually, when I see familiar names suddenly popping up in the Teams um, right. chat, welcoming the new uh, coach or the new staff members. When I see the names and I see, oh, I might have coached this group of people before. So, yes, I would think that when you're talking about enabling people, we're also looking at people coming in, learning some skills, and we're also providing opportunities for career here. So that's when you get to see someone who used to be a student suddenly becomes a colleague. I think that's one of the ways, one of the almost seamless way to transition from a student to a coach. 
Amazing. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Isa. Yeah. Can I uh, add something to that? Yeah. I want. I want to add something because uh, Isa mentioned that I was a student, and yes, um, I was a student exactly a year ago. So before that program, I hadn't thought of being a coach, and also, I thought that I was already good in English communications. Now my story began when. I came across a post by Janish team on Facebook promoting the Epic Online program for persons with disabilities. I am a person with disability. I have low vision on both eyes. And you know what? The program was free. It's supported by uh, the governments, Malaysian governments at that time. So I saw the opportunity and then I enrolled in the program. And then approaching the end of the sessions of the program, one of my coaches asked me, why not, Faiz, you apply? to become a coach. And I was like, really, I can become a coach? Long story short, uh, a few months after that, I, I tried to apply and yes, I got it. And so here I am, I'm a coach. I've been a coach since October last year. And as of now, I've coached around 30 students from four different countries. Yeah, how do you feel like, you know, you know, when you have so many students from different countries, you know, getting a sneak peek into their culture, like, how does it feel? In the program, we, we always talk about important topics or topics that are related to life. So I get to know their uh, opinions, differences of ideas uh, and cultures. And also I get to know people from other countries as well. And it is good because I can learn about their countries, their cultures, their ideas, their way of thinking, how the government work. Mm -hmm. So. Because you know what, I have never left my country except to Singapore. So this is a way for me to learn about other countries and cultures as well. Right, right. And I think you're doing a wonderful job. Keep it up. Yeah, Isa, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I've had experience teaching face-to-face -to -face with uh, students from different countries. So having students, learners from different countries online, to me, is uh, just a different mode of teaching or training. But I do find it really fun because a lot of our learners are either young adults or actually working adults. So the kind of conversations you have, the cultural exchange you have, I guess is very enriching. And I've had students, I've had sessions where some, I would suddenly hear um, sounds of animals in the background and I would ask the students, where are you actually having, where are you? And then, he, and then he's telling me, oh, I'm, I'm actually surrounded by paddy fields. So yeah, and we started talking about it. We started to talk about it and I try to relate it of course to the lessons. We try to make it fun and more relatable to their life. So yes, that's always something new to learn. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. I think that's the fun thing about this Epic Online program because it's English and everything you, you talk about, like even their life experiences, you can you can even make that into like learning session, you know? And it's the small things that you can expand on and like, you know, like how you were saying the paddy field and they're yeah, getting to know about their life. It's like you get to walk in their shoes for that moment, right? Yes. And, and it's a learning uh, experience for both of us because then we start, we started exploring vocabulary on in the environment, what's around him and things like that. So yes, it became an impromptu lesson for the student. And I think we had a lot of fun just talking about that. Yeah, there you go. I think that was the word I was looking for impromptu lesson it happens sometimes because uh with online learning the student is not exactly in the classroom with you or in a room with you going through the training uh he or she or they can be anywhere so um it gives a lot of room for you to talk about a lot of things uh have a lot of exchanging of information culture things like that so yeah why not learn and at the same time have great conversations where you impart a lot of knowledge and information. Exactly. Conversations that enrich your life. Bias, what is your biggest challenge as an epic coach? Oh, I love this question. Um, one of the biggest challenges is handling beginner students because they can't even produce simple sentences correctly. They can't even answer, for example, how are you? How was your day? So I really have to speak with them really slowly, one by one, word per word. This is the beautiful thing with uh, online coaching. 
because I can share screens. So I can share images of objects and say, okay, this is apple, this is rain, this is cloud, right? So they understand it by seeing, observing, and also listening to me. I think that is the most challenging part that I love. But another challenge is not involving me directly, but it amazes me. I mean, how my fellow coaches who are blind can coach students using their computers because they have to use screen readers, right? And some of their students don't even know that they are blind. So how they do that, it, it amazes me. And you know what? It doesn't even affect the quality of the sessions. So Isa, is there really a difference between face-to-face -face teaching and online teaching like is is it a totally different learning experience and how is it different can you share a little bit about that one of the things that um, both the coach and the learner would realize is that you need to listen to signpostings and cues and clear instructions and maybe responses from one another unlike when you have a training or a, you have a class which is face-to-face you can physically go to the student and show the student what needs to be done. And the student will be able to see and react or move accordingly. But when we are conducting online coaching, there's a lot more interaction because you need to tell the other person what to do, how to do it. And you have to have a lot more patience in waiting for the other person to understand what you're saying and respond accordingly. So I would think in terms of the quality of learning, it's not really any different, be it face-to-face -face or online. But I would say in terms of focus, I would think that online learning, you would need to be more focused because in for epic online sessions, it's one-to-one. -one. As a student, for example, you can't really zone out midway. So you really put your all during the session. So I would think that it might even be better, a better learning experience. I think there are distractions all around. And the student really needs to focus, right? Yes. But having said that, uh, for Epic Online Sessions, we do have a self-learning component. Recently, we've incorporated the use of Elsa Speak app, which is a pronunciation assistance app that the student can use. They can go through the activities, go through the assessments on their own without the help of a coach. So this is something that we encouraged our Epic Online students to use on a daily basis preferably, because only then they will be able to see the improvement in their clarity of speech, in the way they pronounce certain words, and the way they pace their words. So we usually give a three-month subscription to them. So by then, if they were to really go with the plan that we give them, they should be able to see an improved way of speaking. It complements Epic Online very well. That sounds so cool. And, and how do you spell ELSA and what does it stand for? E-L-S-A stands for English Language Speech Assistance. It has been around for quite some time actually. So if you were to Google ELSA, you might be able to see the ELSA Speak app. It has been used for a lot of language learners and quite recently we've uh, found out about this wonderful app. So yeah, it's, it's one of the things that we put together to complement the learning experience. I'll, I'll definitely Google that, but I hope when I Google that, Disney's Frozen Elsa don't pop out in search. <laughs> oh, yes. I think you have to Google Elsa capital letters or Elsa speak. And I think it should pop up in Google. Right, right. Got it. Faiz, <laughs> <laughs> any thoughts on this? You know what? Talking about technology, yesterday when a person has a problem, we will say to them, you know what? There is an app for that. But today, you know what? There is an AI for that. And when talking about AI, one of my students who is a Vietnamese, He's in the uh, lower intermediate level. So he has a uh, lack in vocabulary, of course, uh, especially idiomatic uh, expressions. And I taught him about an idiom, drive someone crazy. So the sentence was, Sarah used to drive her parents crazy. If you translate it directly into Vietnamese, of course, you will get a different meaning, right? That is an idiom. You, you cannot translate idiom directly into another language. That is an idiom, right? Because it has a different meaning. So, yeah, of course, I taught him about the real meaning of that. I explained to him in English. Now, how do people like him want to learn idioms in their own languages? For example, Vietnamese, right? So this student opened ChatGPT and he subscribed to ChatGPT Plus with the latest GPT-4 model. And he typed in uh, in Vietnamese, asking ChatGPT to explain the meaning of Sarah used to drive her parents crazy. And 
Within seconds, ChatGPT replied to him in Vietnamese, explaining with an explanation that is similar to me. It's mind-blowing, right? Bernard, if my memory serves me right, you're also a person with disability, right? And uh, two years ago, you're also an epic student. Then here you are. I mean, I believe you have a more inspiring story to tell. So would you mind telling us your story? Right. Um, that is a very good question because it's been so long, but I can still remember how it all started. I was first introduced to Richard Nash team through training program as well, just like you, Faiz. And when I went for the training program, I was offered Epic Online. And I found that very useful, especially when I was just a fresh graduate at that time, before actually stepping into the corporate world. And I needed those skills, those skills of how to speak properly, you know, write properly, whatever it is, you know. And I think my first session with Epic, it was kind of like shocking for me, actually, because I didn't know that you could learn so much online because all this while I've been having only face-to-face -face sessions, whether it's mathematics or English. But I didn't know with technology, you could do so much. And it's amazing. I would say it's, it's so effective with the help of technology and the modules. It's like everything is possible. And I know it has really helped me in my career-wise because after that, I went on to my role as a sales and marketing executive in Janesh team. And then fast forward today, I'm a verification analyst in B-Lab with partnership with Janesh team. So speaking more about my role right now in B-Lab, we usually have meetings with clients from all around the world. So when I say clients all around the world, you know, we have UK, USA. So it can be intimidating when you're speaking to all these CEOs, directors. And I believe to actually show a good impression and to actually do a good work, you need a strong command of English, right? And this is where, once again, I say that Epic has empowered me. It has given me the tools and the skills I needed to further bring my career to the next level. Okay, so Isaiah, now that we have come to the end of the session, I just have one last question left, which I think is very important to ask. Since the EPIC program is doing a wonderful service to the community around us, how do you think more businesses out there can collaborate in offering learning and employment opportunities for people who are neglected and undervalued in the job market, like the marginalized communities? One of the ways organizations can get more involved in this is perhaps to open up um, coaching opportunities for the staff members. That's one, I would say. Another is to actually open and provide opportunities for employment for people from the marginalized community. Because nowadays, I think working hybrid is quite common post-pandemic. You can actually have staff members who are located anywhere in the world or at home. You don't have to have the employee come in to work as long as you or she or they can do the job. So I would think this is something that a lot of organizations and employers out there might want to consider. Employing people from marginalized communities and perhaps setting up work that is purely remote for these people. Right. And Paris, do you want to say something? I came from a technology background. So, of course, I, I want to say about technology. I have experience in this field for 10 years. And I see that if you are missing out on the technology, you will miss out many opportunities. And if you miss out opportunities, how could you help other people? Amongst my colleagues, there are four coaches who are actually visually impaired or simply said they are blind. And uh, Epic Online has given them an opportunity by establishing an online program. So they don't even have to commute and they, they only have to use uh, screen readers and their computers to coach people. Adopt technology and the latest ones. Okay, do not miss out on technology. Yeah, the sky's the limit, you know. And I love that because isn't that what Janesh Day Mission is all about? Leveraging technology and the internet to connect marginalized communities to the global economy. And just like that, we have come to the end of the session. Isa and Faiz, thank you very much for being part of our first episode. This has been such a wonderful sharing session with so many key takeaways. Thank you, Bernard. Thanks for the opportunity, by the way. If you like this podcast, please hit the subscribe button to get updates on new episodes. Stay tuned for episode two, where we will be talking to our special guest about the journey from idea to reality of the around the clock technical support 
manned by a group of people with disabilities. Until next time, bye.